down thy boat! Hi everyone and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name is Dave. Uh, today we have a complete transmission rear end unit from a 414 International and we're going to start a series of videos on uh, some different things of that. Uh, we're going to start off with the hydraulic lift unit. Um, this is the same unit on a 414, 434, uh, 354, 444 and 384. We'll start by lifting it off here. I've got all the bolts out and all the hoses unhooked. Um, these can be a little bit tr tricky to get broke loose. Uh, they sit on a couple of dowels here and this one here is glued on with like a tube and a half of silicone. So I've got a good pry here. Uh, we'll grab that see if we can't get things broke loose and get it lifted off to where we can get working at it. I will move the camera around so you get a decent angle to watch what's going on and we'll get started. So I've got a pretty good stout pry and I'll just put that in across the uh, shift cover underneath the edge of the valve body there and, uh, and not even budget. And on the other side over top of the brake housing there's a little piece that you can get a hold of. There we are. There. there. I set it off the dowels, so now we'll get a chain on there so we can lift it up. So, this is the front of the valve body on the lift unit. Uh, this is the fitting where the hydraulic oil flows into the control valve. Uh, the control valve is operated by the controls on the side your levers. Um, this is a shutoff valve. Uh, I think the book calls it an isolator valve, but a shutoff valve. Basically, that stops the flow of oil from the control valve into the lift cylinder. Uh, you would use this if you put a hydraulic line into here to hook up for remote hydraulics. Uh, when you have something hooked up to your remotes, you would close off this isolator valve and then you would operate what is ever hooked to your hydraulic remotes by the lift lever. Uh, basically, when you close this valve and move that lift lever, lift the move the, your lift lever into a lift position, you're deadheading your pump unless you have something hooked to your hydraulic remotes. If you have this kind of system for running a wood splitter or what have you, it's always a good idea to uh, shut your tractor off before you disconnect your wood splitter or whatnot from this hydraulic system because you can split your hydraulic pump wide open because it deadheads the pump and you know uh, that sudden wall of pressure hits the hydraulic pump and can split it wide open. So when you're using the system, shut your tractor off, get everything unhooked, make sure you open this valve again before you start the tractor up and uh, you won't have any problem. Now one possible source of leaks on these units is on your shutoff valve here and your fast slow valve on the other side. They just slide in and out on O-rings. And so for the fast slow valve, it's held in with two 7 16 inch bolts. Well, the quarter inch bolts, 7 16 head. Once these bolts are removed, then you can just thread this out. And you'll see there's no ring right on here on the part that the slides in at the uh, valve hole. The fast slow valve on the left hand side when you're sitting on the seat is held in by a 7 8 inch nut. Just loosen it up and thread it out also.
and this valve also has no ring on it that uh, can leak and cause trouble. On the front of the valve, right next to the kind of piping section that's going on here, there's a plug that takes a 15 16 wrench. And behind this plug is the regulator, uh, regulator filter. And there's something that you have to be careful of because they will break fairly easily. It's a brass body with a screen around it. And somebody has conveniently broken this one for us before now. Our next step is to remove the valve body from the lift unit and there's a few things we have to do before that. There's a aluminum plate on the side, uh, it's called the oil manifold. A plate on the top to take off and we will have to take the levers out from the side. Uh, we have to take the top off so we can get to uh, the linkage where the levers hook on. tap on the edge of the plate should break it loose. There are four bolts on the bracket that holds the lever assembly on the side of the lift unit and they use a 9 16 wrench. So looking in through the plate in the top of the lift unit you can see that your lift lever operates this rod right here. It's connected there. We take a cotter pin out. And the other lever is our draft control lever. And you can see it operates this right here. And there's no cotter pin or anything holding it in place. It's just in there. Uh, because the lever can't go anywhere. So we should be able to yep, just flop that loose. And yes, wiggle it free. And there we are. And we have our lever assembly loose. On the left hand side of the unit uh, is the oil return manifold. It comes off now. And inside is the oil return tube and it is threaded. There we are. And it slides out the side also. So we should now be able to pull the valve body out the front. Take these uh, three quarter inch head bolts out. Right here. There. Hello, Todd. Yes, you're very helpful. Now, there's a plate on the bottom side of the unit here that we have to take off and the linkage spring that was causing trouble is fastened to it. Now, you can see, there, spring unfastened from the plate. Just had a tab welded onto it for it to hook into an eye. And now the valve body should just slide out the front. There. And we'll set that aside for the moment. So the last thing we're going to remove from our lift unit today is the draft control spring assembly. The assembly uh, is on a threaded rod. It's a, a rod that's threaded at each end. It threads through a link that's fastened in this rocker and has a jam nut at the top to lock it in place. 
So we'll have to loosen that jam nut first. And it, it takes a 15 16th end wrench. There we go, we got it loosened up. And it also has a uh, cotter pin through it, so we'll have to turn this rod so I can get to the cotter pin to unlock it. The nut on the bottom is inch and eight. Once you get the cutter pin wrestled out, you can take that nut off the top. And then this rod will thread it at the bottom. The rod comes out, and then you can fish the other spring from in here and as often the case this one is broken uh, this is really just a buffering spring uh, it helps to take some of the shock or stress when you lift an implement up and the weight comes back against this on your top link it's not exceptionally important uh, so, I mean, if yours is broken, it's not going to stop the lift unit from operating. Uh, but if you have the opportunity to replace it, it's not a bad idea. So we're ready now to split the valve assembly. There are two bolts here. Take a 7 16 wrench, and that will remove the cylinder head from the valve body. Use a chisel in here between the halves to knock them apart. That is the piston. On the back side, this is your draft control part of the uh, unit. Yeah stuff out of the way so you can see there we go that part is the draft control and this is the position control valve and they're both kind of stuck in there at the moment don't want to come out so but anyway those are all the pieces that's the end of our video on what's in a hydraulic unit on one of these 414 series tractors i uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments you can leave that in the comment section below uh, any requests for a video you'd like to see, you can also leave that in the comment section below and I'll try to, you know, if I can, I can I'll make it happen. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day.